Hi, my name is Robert. This video is designed to give you step-by-step -step detailed instructions on completing the task at hand. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. In this video, I'm going to show you how to open up and access the motherboard of a HP Pavilion DV6. Maybe several reasons why you need to get in one. Uh, this one that I have in front of me will not boot. When I push the power button with the AC adapter in, the caps lock key flashes, the uh, F12 key or something over there lights up orange, and I see a little flicker of light over close to the uh, DVD drive. Whenever you power a computer on, it goes through three relatively quick checks. It checks the memory, checks the processor, checks the drive for a disk, and it begins to boot up. Well, this one is not getting through that process and not showing anything on the screen. Not sure if the screen's really working, but the fact that it's not firing up the fan or anything like that, it's probably not getting past the CPU uh, check. So, I'm going to take a risk and replace the CPU to see if that will fix this machine. At any rate, the uh, primary purpose of this video for you is to show you how to get the motherboard out of the machine. So let's go ahead and get started. Now you'll need a little utility cross tip screwdriver, I call them Phillips, and a flat tip screwdriver for prying. And if you want to aid yourself in getting these screws out, it's good little trick to set your screwdriver tip on a magnet. I'm using one from the refrigerator. That will magnetize your screwdriver. Leave it set there four or five minutes. That way when you pull screws out, the screws will stick to the screwdriver and you can set them aside. First thing you wanna do is flip the machine over, remove the battery. You do that by sliding this lever uh, to the direction that ejects the battery. You pull the battery out. Next thing you wanna do is remove this cover from the bottom of the processor and all of that stuff, what you do, you take that same latch and you move it the other way and it unlocks the bottom cover. So take that and set it aside. Next thing I usually do is I'm working on a hard flat surface. I normally make a little template uh, diagram of the bottom of the machine where I can remove and set my screws aside. Then a diagram of the top of the machine when I get to that part and show you where those screws are removed and set aside. You normally don't have to remove the RAM, but I normally do just to get it out of the way. So unclip your RAM on each side and set your RAM trips out of the machine. Basically, when you pry the clips apart, the RAM will automatically pivot up and you pull it out. You should ground yourself to the machine by touching some piece of metal in there and that will help you uh, keep your body electricity stabilized with the machine and you don't create any sparks that will short out anything inside the computer. Next you take a small Phillips screwdriver and remove all of the small screws along the bottom of the machine. Some of them have little arrows next to them and you place them on the piece of paper over there. So I have one here, 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 one here. Remove those first. Then I have four along here. I think they actually hold the soundboard down. So you remove those four. Then I unplug the Wi-Fi chip. If you're going to remove the motherboard, you need to take the two screws out of the Wi-Fi card, unplug it because it holds the motherboard into the computer uh, base. Unscrew the CD drive and pry it out of the machine. Remove that screw and then slide it out of the machine. Then I remove the hard drive. It's got a screw here and it may have four screws in all corners. After you get those screws loose, you lift the hard drive up and you unplug it from this ribbon here. So that's how you get the hard drive out. Let me go ahead and pull that. Not sure if it's totally necessary, but there's three metal screws, silver ones, under the hard drive, so I'm going to remove them as well. 
there's two screws, one here, one here. There's some, some kind of spring uh, loaded releases that I'm going to unscrew, but they will not come out. Some of these other ones don't come out as well. Uh, you try to tap them out by flipping the machine over, but as long as they're already all the way loosened, you should be okay to get the machine apart. Once you have all of the screws removed from the bottom, don't forget the three under the cover. There, there, and there. Go ahead and flip the machine over and take out the keyboard. With the machine open, you want to take your flat tip screwdriver, pry it out, pry it under the back edge of the keyboard, lift it up. As it pops open, you want to slide it back toward the screen and flip open this black tab to release the keyboard cable. Now the keyboard is released and removed from the machine. Now you want to remove these screws that hold the pieces together. There are several on that bottom piece. You want to release this cable tab here. It folds up. That's for the power button. You want to release this one here. And when you go to pry the top off, any other cable that appears to be connected to this palm rest top piece, you want to release those cables. Don't just jerk them loose. Once all the screws are removed, slowly pry the uh, facing up from around the front edge. Work your way around till it pops loose. Make sure you're not jerking any cables up when you lift the top of it off. So I had three cables to release, one for the power button, one for the touchpad, and one over here. I'm not sure where that's going, going to. Some kind of, oh, the security finger reader over there. Now I have access to these USB ports here with that ribbon, your power uh, adapter there with the cables that route around, the motherboard here. The uh, fan here, you can unplug the monitor assembly here, and you have a couple of screws to the hinges here, and probably under this uh, fan assembly. Since I'm going after the processor, I'm going to remove a screw here and a screw here to see if that fan assembly will come up. And also, I got to unplug this plug here for that fan. Next, I'm going to remove the motherboard because the processor is on the underside of it. Here's the part of the fan heat seek assembly that I unplugged from the motherboard. I unplugged the monitor and its thing and its cable from the motherboard. And you have to look for little screws like this. There's one here, and that's the only one I see so far. I'm going to unplug this cable assembly here. And anything that uh, seems to be attached to it, I'll have to carefully unplug as I gently remove the motherboard. You don't want to damage uh, the motherboard or pry it up or anything like that. So try to make a note and take a picture of where these cables and things plug in so you can get that stuff back together properly. With this screw removed here and the two screws for the heat sink fan, the cables unplugged around it, this motherboard should now lift up and um, work its way out from all of this stuff here. So it'll take two hands, this side up, and then work it back out of all of this uh, plastic housing here. Now the computer is pretty much taken apart. If you need to replace the display, you don't have to pull the motherboard up, but you do need to remove a screw from there. Then you need to remove the hinge screws there. Then you need to access the hinge screws under there and get all of that stuff out of the way so that you can replace the entire display assembly. If you only want to remove and replace the LCD, you don't have to remove all this stuff. You can uh, remove these plugs around the edge of the monitor there and there, and then this whole basil will unsnap from around the ring of the glass monitor. Then there are small screws that hold that in place. 
but you will need to remove the keyboard so that you can access the electrical plug for it. Now that the motherboard is removed, you can see the copper tubing for the heat sink. There's uh, some sort of processor here that may be one of the graphic uh, processors, but the main CPU processor is under here. So you need to take these screws loose on all of these uh, points there that hold this heat sink in place. Carefully pull it up and look at your processor, get the right numbers and size for it and replace it. Don't have to be exact replacement for the speed, but it does need to have the proper number of pins in the processor type. Uh, also, this will be a good time to replace your CMOS battery if it's over five or years or so. Now that the heat sinks removed from the computer, as you can see the processor is there. Another processor here, like I said, that may be graphics card processor. At any rate, this heat sink did not stick to the processor, which is good. To get the processor out, you have to turn that screw a quarter turn or a half a turn one direction, and you'll be able to lift that processor out. You can see the detailed numbers on it to order one that will replace it. On this processor, I had to turn the screw 180 degrees to get the uh, processor loose. So now I can lift the processor out, comes out very easy, and I'll work on getting it replaced. Now here's word to the wise. The computer is a part, you're about to order a part for it. Took about 10-15 minutes to get it all apart. My policy is to put the computer back together while I wait for the parts. Because if you don't put it together now, you're probably not going to remember where all those cables and cords go when you go to put it together a week, two weeks, a month from now. So, get the information you need, order the part, put the computer back together while you wait for the part. Or you're going to have a hard time getting it back together. My last train of thought. The body of the computer is mostly plastic. It has little metal uh, receivers for the screws, but they're normally anchored and housed inside plastic. Here's one here. When you put these screws back into the machine, snug them down. If you put them down too tight, they will probably break and come loose from the plastic like this one did here, if it'll ever come in focus. There it is. So, don't tighten those screws down tight, or they'll tear out of the body of the computer. Then you'll have a computer that won't be securely fastened. If you're like me, you can't see those small numbers and stuff. I normally switch my camera or phone or whatever to camera mode, take a picture, and zoom in on the part numbers I need. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.